Hello, I'm Mike and welcome to this bit of my channel where I talk about things to do with the physics degree or the physics PhD, um, either by questions that I've asked myself, things that I've been asked perhaps, and just sort of chat around that subject. In this case I want to talk a little bit about imposter syndrome. So the idea is that especially if you're doing something where you are surrounded by other people who appear intelligent and competent, that you feel like well, like you're an imposter, that you're going to be found out. This is obviously something that's going to be very common, as I say, if you're surrounded by people who are definitely very intelligent and very good at your subject, which in your degree you are, and in a PhD you certainly are, you're regularly interacting with experienced and well-respected academics, it's very easy to feel like you don't belong. This affects different people differently. Some people might be completely fine and never feel out of place, but a lot of people will, and I just want to chat a bit about how it hit me and what I did to try and sort of fight back against it, I suppose. What I did to try and quell the feeling inside me that I didn't belong. So the way it hit me was very much class-based. And as I say, it's, it's the feeling of not belonging, you're feeling like an imposter. And what that generally means is that you have this idea of who most physicists are, which you see from your degree and from who you're talking to. And if, if you don't seem like them, if there's something that makes you seem out of place, then that's going to be where the idea of being an imposter comes in for you, likely. That, that's going to be the thing that triggers these feelings of, I don't belong here. I'm not one of these people, which will then trigger the idea of okay, I am not long, but I don't belong here because I'm a fraud and because I don't actually know anything. So, as I say, my case is it was quite class based. So, I'd be talking to people who would be talking about well, about their family and about so, okay, you know, here's someone who's going into a professorship and. Is talking about the advice their granddad gave them for being a professor. They're like, okay, fine, I'm never going to have that. Or they're talking about sort of working in or sort of trying to go into industry during my degree. I remember talking to someone who had been able to get some work experience in a company that was sort of scientifically related to design. Um, who sold scientific equipment because their dad was high up in that company and sort of they knew that meant they knew where the placements were. I mean they didn't it wasn't sort of complete corruption I only got in because of my dad, but they knew where the opportunities were because their dad worked higher up in the company and I sort of realised I feel very out of place here. Another one was there was there was a girl I was talking to during, like, when I started my PhD, who was telling me about how, because she went to Cambridge and had went into the same sub school. I can't remember what they call them, but you know what I mean. She'd went to the same one of those as her dad had, and had been talking about sort of how it had changed over the years. Okay, fine, and yeah, it was really nice and interesting, but. It was something that made me feel like, yeah, I do I really belong here amongst these people? And it wasn't meant, and I'm sure, of course, that she's in a group of physicists surrounded by mostly men and probably feels out of the group for completely different reasons, and we'll have the same... We, we can share experiences of feeling like we don't belong, I suppose. But in my case, it's very... It's very much based on I don't... I get the feeling that I don't belong in this group of people because because of my background. So, in that case, my th my thought of how I best fought it, how I tried to make myself feel comfortable in a great degree, in the, and in my PhD, and the way it worked for me is to try and embrace that. In my case, it was embracing my sort of families, my class, my status and 
be be trying trying to be openly proud of that. Like up yours. My my dad's doing stage hire manual labour still. Like in his fifties and I'm proud of that. I'm I'm happy. He's a bloody good lad, bloody enjoys his job. And it built me. Worth doing the heavy lifting when I was a kid, getting getting some experience in that industry. And like spending my hours lifting steel deck and lifting like flight cases and boxes and moving stuff around that that helped make me and to be proud of that to say this is part of who I am has really lessened the impact of feeling like an imposter and it's also that sort of thing if I'm now much more comfortable if people are talking about family I will very openly talk about what my family does and be very open with my th- my thoughts about like, about that in a way that like before especially when I started I would feel very nervous about and that has limited the amount the amount of t- um, the feelings of being an imposter I've had the other way it came up to me other than class is it is very easy to dismiss skills that you have learnt by rote and I learnt an awful lot by rote what I mean by that is you can sort of tell that there is a difference in intelligence between remembering something and being able to recall it very quickly like times tables or square numbers or like the value of constants and things in physics or equations because you just you read it a hundred times you write it down a hundred times you remember it right and actually having the brain to go oh it must be this because and understanding the physics behind it it's very easy to dismiss those rote learned skills as something that makes you valuable as a scientist. And I think the way I've got around thinking about that is just to to understand that there is still value in knowing something because you know it and because it's a fact that you know. In that sort of I've learned it by rote sense, I've wrote it down many times and I will now understand, I will now know the answer and that is that it does make you a lot more efficient as a worker so when I'm if I am thinking about how to design something then there's a lot of just facts in my head that I can pull out quickly without having to go oh hang on Let's, let's think of the science behind this angle. Would this raise the pressure? Would this lower the pressure? Would this, would would this, like, make this thing hotter? Would this make, would this take heat away? Without having to say the scientific, without having to think about the scientific principles behind it, I can very quickly get this bash bosh. This is what I need to do, and that is in itself a skill. It may not be as seen as as vital to science as the sort of more creative understanding of how things work but understanding that those rote learning skills are useful and are valuable to you as a scientist that did also have an effect on like not feeling like an imposter because as I say it's very easy to feel that those skills don't count but anyway that's enough rambling on not feeling like you belong Hopefully I've said something that maybe, if, if this is something that you get, maybe something that I've said might help you, maybe something that I've said might be useful as a way to work your way around this. But anyway, thank you, goodbye. <laughs>